Hello race fans, the numbers guy here. This webinar is an overview of the numbers and an introduction to pattern handicapping and how to use it and the numbers to enhance your thoroughbred handicapping skills. This is AccuRacing's first handicapping webinar. We will produce additional webinars soon that will discuss specific patterns and how you can spot them. To begin, let me show you the format of the numbers card. First, the header. This shows basic information about the track, the race number, the surface distance, type of race, sex and age restrictions, and the name of the stakes race if it's a graded stakes. Next, the month year. Reading left to right with the most recent to the left. Then we have the week ending dates. Again, reading most recent first. In the far left column, we show you the horses' names. Then in the main part of the grid, we show you the numbers. To indicate distance and surface of the race, we use a key. For distance, the standard font is a sprint, anything under a mile, and bold font is a route, up one mile or more. The surface type is indicated by a standard font for dirt, italics for turf, and underlined for poly. On our sample card, you can see Kindergarten Cop ran a turf route in August and Center Divider ran a dirt sprint in July. Now, let's take a look at the card for the Arkansas Derby. Of course, the race has already been run, but we'll start with the card prior to the race so you can see the process we use to handicap. The first thing we do is check for the fastest horse in the race, the fastest number in the race. And as you can see, the factor and his 3.3 at a route is the fastest of any horse in the race. Actually, his 3.1 in a sprint was even faster. Then the next thing we do is we check for the fastest that each horse has run in the particular race. So going down here, you can see that there are uh, most of the horses ran their best or their fastest in their very last race. There are a couple of exceptions, but uh, generally you've got a bunch of improving three-year-olds here. We circle these races just so you get a feel for what the caliber of the race is and what you can expect um, to be a winning or a competitive number in the race. In addition, um, to looking at the fastest numbers, we also are stress the importance of looking for progressive patterns or important patterns. And we'll get into that a lot more later. So uh, what we'll do is we'll go down and take a look at each individual horse here and see their fastest number and, and examine that. So our very first horse is Caleb's Posse, who has a 6.1 in his last race. It's a fast number, no doubt, and except for the, the factor, this horse looks to be pretty tough in here. However, a further examination of the number and his pattern, uh, his pattern is a zigzag pattern, and I struggle with this. The 6.2 that he earned in November was pretty quick as he marched down to that, and he follows that up with a bounce. In his first route race, he bounces to an 18.1, then he improves again back to an 8.3, regresses again to the 13.5 and then zooms forward to the 6.1. So he's in and out here and um, he also, just in looking at the Brisnet uh, past performances, this horse is not bred to get a mile and an eighth. He is sprint bred. Uh, I really don't like this kind of zigzag pattern and I certainly don't like a sprint bred horse in a mile and an eighth race. Okay, my next horse, Nero, has got a nice marching pattern. Uh, first race of his life, he runs the 22, and then like so many here, his first route race, he bounces, 36.1, and since then, he's proceeded to move forward uh, with huge marching improvement. The 12.2 is a nice improvement, and then he zoomed right forward to the 7.7. .7. This is a horse on the improve, and he is bred to route. Then Elite Alex also has a very nice, very nice marching forward form. 14.9, 12.3, 9.7. 9 
the only thing that you could say negative about him is that he is quite a bit slower than most of the competitors in here and he will need to improve quite a bit off that 9.7 the factor 3.3 wow that is a blistering fast number um, and his 3.1 that he ran sprinting in the second race of his life is almost breathtaking uh, this is without a doubt a very very fast horse and he uh, is much faster than He's run much faster than anybody else in this race. He is definitely clearly the one to beat. Um, however, he doesn't really have any forward moving pattern. It's just a fast, fast horse. Brethren, okay, this is the opposite of the kind of pattern you want to see. This horse ran a 4.6 his first race. I think he went 108 and 4 at Belmont uh, at six furlongs the first time out. Um, and he's proceeded to just back up since then. He won the, all three of his first three races, but it steadily uh, went the wrong way. And then 11-3 in his last race. I do not look forward uh, to this horse running an improved race. Sway away. Uh, actually not a bad looking form. Um, 8.4 in his first race. Uh, came back a little bit off that. And then after a layoff, comes back 9-2 and then an 8. He's headed in the right direction. He's just a little bit slower than some of these. But, you know, not a bad looking pattern here. Alternation. Uh, this horse, uh, just to kind of give you a tip, actually ran fifth at 17 to 1. And if he hadn't been coupled with Caleb's posse, he probably would have been 60 to 1 in here. You look at the pattern and you think uh, that 13 1 is just too slow for this group. But take a look at the pattern. It's actually quite nice. 15 5 is first out, improves, pairs up, runs 14 threes, improves again. These mild gentle improvements often lend themselves to a huge springboard effort at some time and he ran a decent race in the Arkansas Derby this guy coming in fifth um, and he also has some time off uh, after that race in February so even though his, his race is slow um, this horse you could look to improve Truman's Capote also 12-2 is quite slow in here even though it was a huge improvement a huge step forward for him you know, he again would need huge improvement again just to be competitive here. Dance City, on the other hand, has got another one of those just marching forward, beautiful marching pattern. 15-3, 11-6, 7 This guy is just um, headed in the right direction. Arch, arch, arch. This guy has got a beautiful marching pattern. It's uh, almost, almost perfect. Uh, first race 13-6 improves to 9-2 sprinting and then like so many in here he bounces to the moon 17.4 in his first route race and then just turns it right back around again headed right down 9.4 and down to a 6.7 he's just almost screaming at you that he's going to run another huge monster race here JP's Gusto okay this is a little subtle read but um this kind of horse I would expect to bounce. Okay, why? He also has got a, a sharp improvement from the 11.6 to the 7.7. But he also has many races and he had kind of a plateau somewhere between 9.5 and 11.6 where he ran a whole bunch of races. He's plateaued there, kind of found his, his uh, niche and then a sharp improvement like this. This is almost exactly the kind of time where you can expect this horse to bounce. In addition, another negative that I see on him is that his second race of his life, he ran a 7.5, and he's never improved on that. This is not the kind of pattern that I like to see. JW Blue, okay, this horse up to the 6.3 had the beautiful marching pattern, again, that I love. That 6.3 was um, just uh, set him up perfectly. Uh, he bounced off of that, ran an 8.4, or 8.5, off of that bounce uh, and then coming back quickly I'm not going to expect continuation of his forward move but at 68 to 1 that's what this guy went off at you know you can see the 6-3 is at least competitive and at 68 to 1 I think he ran fifth or sixth in here and um, certainly beat uh, most of the field Saratoga Red 10-5-8-2 uh, you know not a lot to go on definitely in the right direction but he'll definitely need to improve more to run with with this group 
So let's take a look at what we call the noteworthy misses. Horses that uh, didn't run as good as we thought, well actually didn't run as good as the public thought for whatever reason. Okay, number one horse, the factor. This guy went off at four to five and to me it looked like he deserved to be four to five. Um, and he ran up the track. Um, re taking a look at his pattern, there really isn't much of a pattern here. It's just that the 3.3 was really, really fast. Uh, turns out uh, he had a physical ailment, uh, flip palate, I guess, and uh, when er underwent uh, minor throat surgery after the race. Baffert laid him off for a while, and he came back and ran another monster race at Del Mar. Second disappointment, at least for the public, was Elite Alex. Um, this horse was the six to one third choice, and um, you know, nice looking pattern, no doubt about that. But the nine seven, his best, was very slow for this race, and uh, he was just not competitive in the race. Uh, most likely, he was bet because of Calvin Burrell being his jockey, and at the time, Calvin Burrell was the darling of everybody, um, and you know, people would bet him just because. Uh, of his recent success in the Kentucky Derby. Brethren, okay, this horse is exactly the epitome of a horse going the wrong direction. He just looks like he's going to run a bad race and he backs up even further than he had. Uh, again, the only reason that people bet this horse that I can think of is that um, trained by Todd Ble Pletcher and uh, ridden by Ramon Dominguez, but he certainly didn't have the numbers or the pattern to support any uh, wager. And then Caleb's posse um, just returned to bounce as it kind of looked like he would. He also was not really bred to get the distance. And again, I don't like these zigzag patterns. I want to see a horse headed in the right direction. Now the horses that did well. Um, actually, this trifecta paid 5000 bucks, and it was not that difficult to get. A student of the numbers would be able to uh, isolate some of these patterns. Arch, 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 again, beautiful marching pattern. You know, toss out the 17-4 in his first route race, um, which you can just generally almost always do with three-year-olds, and he just charged right down to that 6-7. It was just, he was screaming out to you that he was going to run another monster race, and he did. 5.7 to win the Arkansas Derby at 25-1. to 1. What a gift. Nero, again, he also had a nice marching pattern. Just charged right down to that 7-7. Seven, seven, um, ran another nice race with the 7.9, bred to route, uh, all systems go, and he went off at nearly 10 to 1 off a of 5 to 1 morning line. Again, a gift. Dance City, again, here you got the 15.3, 11.6, 7.6, .6, you know, beautiful marching pattern. Uh, he backed up a little bit compared to the other two, um, but part of that was he's on the lead and he didn't uh, lose any ground. Um, so his number doesn't get any additional links lost built into it. But uh, bred to route on the dam side, uh, Todd Pletcher's the trainer, nothing wrong with his pattern. He was easy to, um, to see. Well, that's the conclusion of AccuRacing's Pattern Handicapping Overview. If you go to our website, AccuRacing.com, you can read a description of many patterns and get a free sample of a numbers card. Look for our next videos, and hey, good luck.